What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Poco A5 and you guys might be familiar with this. This is the latest Evolution X build review on the Poco A5 and the version right now is 10.5. It's been a long time since of I didn't actually review the latest build for about a month I would say because I was waiting for updates and yeah, I did receive a couple of updates. There were some bugs and I'll talk about every detail about it and the overall stability. So stay tuned till the end of the video. Of course, this is based on Android 15 guys. And yeah, this is how the Easter egg actually looks like. Let me just go back. We have the Evolution X version again as 10.5. And if you just keep tapping on it, you will get this Evolution X Easter egg as well. And the security patch that you are getting is latest of April 5th, 2025. And the build date over here is of 21st April 2025. So the latest one as of right now. And the maintainer is of course still Joe Huab. And we have the stock kernel as a 5.10 GKI kernel. Now in the system settings, the only new thing that you will notice, this is the device diagnostics and there is the component health and stuff. You can test stuff with this and you have the system updater, of course, which looks like this. There is the USB configuration. You have seen it multiple times and there are the gestures. There is the quick tab, the quickly open camera, the navigation mode is there and in the settings of it. We of course have the swipe to invoke assistant, long press to toggle the circle to search and stuff. Everything is there and it's working flawlessly even translate text and stuff with the circle to search is possible there is the back gesture height and stuff adjustment let me just go back we have the three button navigation as well and of course you can actually toggle on or off the circle to search from right here now there is the double tap to check phone and the lift to check phone ambient mode so if i just lock the device just like this i don't have the always on display turned on if i just put the device on the desk and pick it up on my hand as you can see the pickup kind of gesture it's totally working fine well not really sure why the clock is not coming in full screen. I'll try that later. We have the double tap to check phone. We have the press and hold power button action. Swipe to take screenshot option is there. There is the prevent ringing option as well. And the buttons, we have the invert layout, edge long swipe action, long press power button, toggle torch. I'll talk about that. And we have the reorient, even the show volume panel on the left side. Now talking about that, if I just turn on the flashlight with this, as you can see, the power of the flashlight, it's not that powerful because it's not on the full brightness. Now to make it full brightness, if I just increase it from here, just notice as you can see right now, it's again at the full brightness. Now, if I just toggle it off and then toggle it on from here, of course, it will go in full brightness. But once I just lock the device and toggle it with uh, like long press power and toggle torch, it just goes back again into the lower brightness. So yeah, this is kind of an issue. I would say that by default, the flashlight is getting turned on at the lower brightness. But I think it is a source side kind of issue because I also faced it on the Redmi K20 Pro, the other ROMs which supports this flashlight kind of brightness adjustment now overall in terms of stability yes it has been good if you just don't get too much into the customizations let me just talk about one thing if i go into the theme section and in the lock screen there are these widgets like you can enable these ones and you can add any kind of widget and as you can see it shows all of these things which is this now bar now here in the lock screen it's right now fine but if i just plug the device in it will go haywire I'll show you an example of what it was doing in the previous build and I just checked it on the newer build. Even this one too has that kind of bug. So yeah, this is the weird kind of bug that you will face if you enable this now bar here. I don't know why it's or how it's happening and how to actually fix this kind of thing, like fix it in the ROM. But yeah, you can just totally turn it off and it will be fixed. Now there is also this issue if you enable these widgets and stuff. If you go into the wallpapers and styles into the lock screen, as you can see, the clocks are not coming into the full screen. So to actually fix that, you need to go to the settings, then go to display settings, then the lock screen settings, then you can have to enable the dynamic clock separately and you can enable the device controls as well. And right now, as you can see, the dynamic clock is appearing. Also, if I do the pickup gesture, yes, the dynamic clock right now works perfectly fine. The bigger clock, I mean. So yeah, this is the bug that I have faced. Now, let me tell you one of the most important bugs that have been fixed with these latest updates. I am pretty happy about it is that like while doing WhatsApp video calling and stuff, if you just scroll Twitter, the audio used to just straight up go away. But right now that bug has been completely fixed. Yes, like for the past couple of updates, I have also said it was fixed. But later on, I found out that it wasn't actually fixed. It's still kept happening but right now i would say it has been completely completely fixed there is no issues of like video calls audio going out or something right now it is very stable experience 
otherwise it's almost a perfectly stable rom and it's a really good thing that we have the like a kind of camera here and it takes the photos very fast i'll show you some examples here and in the video option you can shoot up to 4k and 30 no 60 fps option here of course for the front camera yes there is 1080p 60 fps option and if i just switch to the rear camera we have the documents mode and stuff the enhanced mode the pro video mode also you can go up to 4k and 30 and there is the portrait mode and with the front camera as well yes let me just show you a quick example here it works perfectly fine as you can see the edges are perfectly well balanced and here you can just swipe up and get the more options like the panorama short film long exposure and stuff like that you have to download them but yeah the options are there so yeah it's a really great camera i would say right out of the box it's there so this is really nice also if i just show you the basic stuff the play integrity passes right out of the box so banking apps are not a problem here i have used a lot of banking apps here no problems whatsoever with it the ir blaster works flawlessly also in the system if you check the dear manfo it shows l1 so you can stream netflix or amazon prime internet p and obviously it still has the google photos unlimited backup here so this is a really nice feature to have you need to toggle it on from the customization settings by the way and in case if you are wondering about the other spoofs let me show you in the component spoofing there are this play integrity spoof you need to update play integrity from time to time if it stops working or if you just flash the rom then you can just update the play integrity from here after the first boot and of course if you don't know how to flash this rom you can check out the flashing guide from the description box below there are pixel props there are spoof tensor features storage encryption play store spoof google photo spoof and we have the snapchat spoof as well we have the hide app list smart pixels and there is a hide developer status as well there is also this ignore window secure flex with which you can take a screenshot even in the apps where it doesn't allow you to take a screenshot so yeah things you can do in custom roms of course the 5g speeds and stuff are working perfectly fine here no need to worry yes geo has dropped speeds in my area earlier it used to go about 800 000 plus even 5G calling in my area, it's totally working fine here. I have tested that. Let me just give you a demo. As you can see, I placed a call and still I have 5G over here. So yeah, basically, even if you place a call, your 5G will return in the areas where it's possible. Of course, you are getting the pixel launcher right out of the box here. Swiping to the left will get the Google's Discover page. Swiping up will get you the app drawer. And swiping down, of course, gets you to the quick setting panel here. Currently switching to Do Not Desktop, it's a like two-step process, I think, because the Do Not Desktop toggle right now says modes. If I just click on it, there is to not disturb and this is how I turn it on. And the widgets, you can add any widget, they will of course work properly. And of course the power menu here looks like this, you can also change the style of it. I have the advanced reboot enabled, that's why it looks like this. You can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. The volume panel here, it looks like this. I think you can also change the style of it from the settings and stuff. In the app section, there are still the cloned apps. So you can have two accounts of WhatsApp or Facebook, any app. There is the app lock as well. Let me just show you. Yeah, the Telegram app I have locked. If I just open it, as you can see, the app lock works perfectly. But yes, the settings of it is in the app settings. And there is a game space. So you can add any game and you can have the overlay of it for the gaming FPS and stuff. And there is a sidebar as well. So you can enable that. And from here, if I just launch a particular app, as you can see, the calculator actually opens in a like smaller window and yeah, it actually works, I guess. So yeah, let's talk about battery. This is how the settings looks like. We have the battery information right here. It shows the cycle count and stuff. So this is really interesting and it shows the maximum capacity, the design capacity, voltage, current, temperature, all these things. We have the battery diagnostics, the thermal profiles are there as well and i have also enabled that to performance for benchmarking apps then we have the charging control as well i have disabled that because that disables the fast charging over here almost now let me talk about the battery life here with the aku battery app i have tested it with and yeah the overall battery life i would say it's decent because my battery has a lot of charging cycles right now about 800 plus so you can guess right now my screen on time here shows as about 7 hours 20 minutes the screen off here shows as 44 hours you can say and the combined use is of 12 hours so but considering i'm a heavy user that's why these kind of battery lives or estimated screen on times i would say it is a decent number in the health section we have the battery health showing up as 84 percent and the fast charging here also works properly no need to worry about it let's talk security and this is how it looks like right now there are some kind of alerts here and in the device settings in the settings of it these are the things that you will get of course there is face unlock and fingerprint i have already set up the fingerprint there is also the private space of android 15 and in the more settings there is trust if you just scroll down there is clipboard auto clear there is high developer option and there is also the theft protection and stuff all these things 
Now again, the like finger scanner speed here, I'm like really happy about it that it's working almost flawlessly here. Yes, sometimes I have seen it's like, as I have that hip protection enabled, I think because of that, if the phone is being shaked a lot heavily, it will ask you for the pin more often than not. So yeah, be careful about that if you enable the protection. But otherwise, as you can see, the finger scanner works great. Now, if I enable always on display, even with that, the finger scanner here works perfectly fine. And the animation here, if I just don't have to wake and then tap the finger scanner, this is how it looks like. Now let's talk overall performance here. In the test UFO website with the HDR and stuff turned on, it shows 119 FPS. So pretty much 120 FPS, you can say, or 120 Hertz the display is running at. So overall, like scrolling and stuff or zooming in, zooming out, all those things like browsing internet and even scrolling Twitter here, it's not a problem. Once the content actually loads up, as you can see, it's a very, very smooth experience. No issues whatsoever. Even switching between apps, it's just straight up not a problem. This is the locked app. That's why I need to like put the fingerprint. The RAM management here, it's really good. No issues whatsoever that I have faced with the actual performance here. And if you want to know about the benchmarks of this build, here are the benchmarks on your screen. And there is a new modes kind of settings where you can just enable the do not disturb or you can set up bedtime and the game dashboard and stuff you can totally customize from here. In the sound settings, of course, this is how it looks like and you can switch the output device from right here. And by the way, if you just scroll down, yes, there is a clear speaker option and stuff. Clear calling option is also there. But the Dolby Atmos, I think right now has been removed. So yeah, I cannot simply find the Dolby Atmos over here. So in this update, maybe it has been removed. Of course, in the display settings, this is how it looks like. There is extra time, there is screen timeout. And in the lock screen settings, these are the things that you will get in case you want to get an idea about it. We have the night light and you can schedule it, change the intensity. Live display options are there. There is the color calibration. There are the reading modes and we have the colors options like vivid, saturated and stuff. And there is also the reality display engine. You can customize that. We have the color contrast kind of settings of Android 15. We have the rotation settings and the peak refresh rate and stuff is there. And even minimum refresh rate you can customize. Display cutout is there, double tap to wake and sleep. And we have the wake up on plug. There is the high touch polling rate. And we also have the screen protector mode as well. You can enable that to increase the touch sensitivity. We have the power app refresh rate as well. You can set power app up to 60, 120 or 60 hertz on landscape and stuff. You can totally choose those. There is a separate backup or copy data settings as well. So you can just totally backup to your Google Drive if you have to really set it up later on. And there is also option to copy data using Android Switch kind of. And in terms of the customizations, it's, it's a lot of customizations here, guys. We have the monet kind of settings. We have the wallpaper styles and we have the brightness data style, notification style as well, power menu style as well. We have the progress bar style. Just notice the lock sound, unlock sound, system font, background blur, more themed icons is there. We have the system icons as well. I mean, this is just getting too much at this point, but yeah, this ROM has plenty of customization. But the good thing is if you don't want to get into all of these customizations and stay away, just use the device as a pixel kind of ROM. Yes, you can totally do that. It won't bother you in my opinion. And we have the boot animation customization as well. Then we have the charging animation, screen of animation, all these things. The lock screen kind of settings is there. Of course, I have already showed you that. There is a media cover art, charging stats, always on display image. We have the pulse, weather settings and stuff. We have the pocket detection, pocket mode and stuff. But yeah, do not enable this now bar. It will cause a lot of issues when you like plug in your charger. Yes, after you plug that out, it will be fine. But yeah, just don't experiment with this. In the status bar, we have the brightness control, the quick pull down, the status bar tuner, the clock and date customization, the battery style. I have been using it with the landscape iOS style 16. We have the battery percentage when charging, the logos, and we have the Wi-Fi standards and stuff. And these are the quick setting panel customization where you can adjust the brightness slider position. You can adjust the brightness slider percentage or enable it. We have the quick setting header image customization, then the battery style and stuff, quick setting widgets. You can also enable to have the two layout kind of widgets here, I would say. Yes, right now it doesn't show up because I need to restart the system UI. For that, we have the vertical layout and stuff. We have the hide on lock screen and that is for security. I have enabled that. Like, let me actually show you what it does. Like even from the lock screen, I cannot go into the power menu from here, even if I press and hold the power button. And in the quick setting panel, it just shows blank, as you can see. So yeah, it doesn't go anywhere from the lock screen if I don't like insert a pin or if I don't put my fingerprint scanner here. 
we have the notifications in the notifications we also have the heads up and the compact heads up options less boarding ones and we have the edge lighting kill app allowed when display is on and stuff in the power menu we of course have the advanced reboot and the device control and stuff advanced reboot of course is there i have already showed you the power menu here and the miscellaneous settings already i have showed you that so yeah if you just ask me personally if i would use this rom as my daily driver yes obviously i am still using this rom as my daily driver for about like couple of months on my poco f5 and i did not even switch roms here because i just love the overall experience of evolution x yes it has bugs from time to time but with the amount of consistency it gets fixed that is just super impressive to me like let's assume if something major is not working then maybe for about after two to three days the update will come i'm for sure but if it's a minor bug i would say yes that can stay for almost two to three months even here but yeah minor bugs definitely don't bother me but yeah overall i would say the overall experience of using the evolution x rom it's really good because of the consistency of the updates and latest security patch and stuff you are getting a lot of customizations and the overall features like the unlimited photos backup and the flashlight brightness adjustment and stuff all these things it's just a like really unique kind of rom to have on your daily driver device but do let me know your comments about this latest 10.5 evolution x rom on the poco a5 and how do you like it or not and please subscribe to the channel for many more awesome contents like this give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is Tito from kdn tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now